Welcome all participants in this uh, session and uh, my heartiest congratulations and gratitude to Bimas from uh, the Student Federation, Bangladesh International Student Federation, who is arranging this uh, conference. Today's my topic is uh, the, about unconsciousness. Actually, in daily, day, daily to day practice, we are aware of this unconsciousness in our outpatient department in emergency. So I am Professor Sujat Pal. The Control Medicine Chattagra Medical College wants to talk something about this uh, on, on these topics. Okay, so I, I, I can share now. My, to my topic is uh, the unconsciousness, what next thing actually? There is a case scenario, the 50 years old male or female present in the emergency or in the ward with unconsciousness. How will you approach this patient? This is my thinking. What is consciousness actually? It's a set of neural process to perceive, to understand, comprehend, and act on internal and external environment. And in response against internal environment to go to the washroom, the external environment to say hello to any any patient, any any person, this this response and uh, act of uh, act and response. If this happened to a man or woman, this is called consciousness. And component of consciousness is arousal and awareness. Arousal means uh, to have a, a sound mind. Awareness to be aware with the surroundings. This is the common place needed for the maintenance of consciousness. Actually, there are uh, many things, uh, many, many differential points between the arousal and this, this is the few points. Arousal describes the degree to which the individual appears to be able to interact with this environment, the arousal. And another reflects the depth and content of the arousal. How much arousal is this kind of awareness? How much or the degree of awareness, awareness is called, the uh, degree of arousal is called awareness. In one side is the arousal, another is the content, depth of awareness, and and in this two is bridged by one one condition, the mental status, and that mental status is uh, is uh, changed by many things, either metabolic or disease or anything. In one sentence, arousal is the level of consciousness, and awareness is the content of consciousness. How much? If we think about the anatomy of the mental status, we have to think about one organs. It's called ascending reticular activating systems. And this ascending reticular activating systems is present in the upper brain systems, hypothalamus and thalamus. And that ascending reticular activating systems of brain stem, hypothalamus and thalamus determines the arousal. And another or another another system or another parts of the brain, the cerebral hemispheres and interaction between the functional areas of cerebral hemispheres determines the intellectual and emotional uh, functioning. So the interaction between the cerebral hemispheres and a particular activity system determines the normal mental status of the patient. If there is any discrepancy between the interaction between these two, there will be presence of un unconsciousness and uh, unawareness and unarousal. Functions of eras, thalamic cortical uh, system it depends on integrative the structure, actually anatomical structure, metabolic integrity, circulatory integrity, and cognitive integrity, neurotransmitter this, this, this is this is this is the main things actually. This thalamic and cortical interactions may be disorganized anatomically, metabolically by circulatory events or anything, or community neuromuscular transmission. These are three things to be known to maintain the arousal and awareness is the sum of the patient's intellectual cognitive functions and emotions is the, is the interaction between the intellectual functions and emotions and depends upon the actual cerebral cortex thalamus and the interactions like arousal and how there is alteration of the consciousness we have to think about that 
alteration of consciousness i have, i have told it earlier depends on the change in the arousal leading to acute confusion states and trauma actually in the previous stage of coma is called acute confusion states and it, it uh, when there is a change of arousal we will call it acute confusion states and coma and when there is a change in the content uh, differentiating uh, depth of arousal this is called dementia delusions confusion or inattention these are two things we have to um, keep in our mind and definition of the arousals or consciousness can be done by any another way alertness consciousness is a perfectly normal state of arousal another thing the lethargy mild reduction in the alertness mild reduction in the alertness after nations means moderate reduction it's a bit higher a bit uh, moderate reduction of the alertness is after nation and in stupor is defined as unresponsiveness from which the person can be aroused only by vigorous and repetitive stimulation it turns to deep sleeps when not controlled stimulated this is stupor so arousal level of arousal can be classified in four ways alertness lethargy after nation and stupor now what is coma means what is unconsciousness coma or unconsciousness is a state of unavoidable responsiveness in which the patient lies with eyes closed this will be a reversible or reversible and maybe reversible or reversible the sleep like appearance and behaviorally unresponsive to external stimuli the patient is not responding to external stimuli and maybe not responsive to internal stimuli there will be blood retention there will be incontinence of the urine in unconsciousness so stimuli the patient will not respond to stimuli to cause coma there will be dysfunction of the eras means at ascending the reticular activating system or both in the body this is the final what i told about anatomy and i have told it earlier and what is the cause of consciousness unconsciousness the most common cause this is the most common cause of unconsciousness i have designed it for the medical students and there are many 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 things about the cause of consciousness forget about this this is the common which we are getting in chapter of medical colors i have designed it number one is epilepsy very common infections meningitis or septicemia any things opium or street poisoning acidity poisoning metabolic cause means diabetic ketoacidosis hypoglycemia etc etc failure of different types respiratory failure with carbon dioxide narcosis renal failure hepatic failure trauma road traffic accident and stroke these are the main some some causes of uh, unconsciousness in our hospitals but besides this i am telling it again besides this there are many causes of unconsciousness we are not uh, dealing with it as a platform of the students thing is that the commonest cause of coma is metabolic disease 35 percent drugs and toxins 25 percent means almost 50 percent and 50 to 60 percent is the metabolic cause drug and toxins and neurological cause mass lesions trauma stroke and sinus infection is around 30 to 40 percent so if unconscious patients should have to be managed in their medicine and uh, dependent from medicine or independent internal medicine from there you have to discriminate whether you to go to your diabetic wards the, whether there is a failure the hepatic failure whether renal failure or there is a neurological cause this should have to be should have to be think thought should have, should have to be uh, in our uh, thinking there are some words the common mimics number one is locked in syndrome catatonia conversion reactions and persistent vegetative state actually locked in catatonia conversion reaction and persistent vegetative state is it different, different terms related to coma we will talk it later but there is some uh, uh, there is, uh, i have told it earlier uh, at ascending reticular activity system especially in the brain stem and cerebral cortex by by knowing this figure we can is we can uh, uh, understand somehow about the pathophysiology of or anatomy of this uh, this, this condition normal means here we see cortex is all right and ascending reticular system is all right so this is normal 
acidity when we call basal stress when the damage to the cortex and hemispheres is damaged but ascending reticular system is active in intact then we will call it persistent vegetative state we will find many patients like this especially after rotary exam after the stroke this may happen the patient uh, will be looks like uh, they are opening the eyes but not responding another is can locked in syndrome more close to the uh, vegetative state but here is uh, their cerebral cortex is intact but there is damage in the ventral cones or ascending reticular sorry ascending reticular activity system is also intact also intact cortex yeah, but there there is damage to the ventricular cones ventral pons this locked in syndrome the patient will not respond anything in response to the external stimuli but this with other things control of control of urination control of this all this is all right last is brain stem death within brain stem death there will be the actually defect in the brain stem and in the brain stem you know we are we are, we are knowing that there are all the central uh, respiratory respiratory uh, center all the centers is there and if there is brain stem that we have irreversible damage and the patient has no hope to survive okay. another thing is acute i have told it an acute confusion state in coma we are dealing with the uh, coma actually or unconsciousness but what in the and uh, the previous stage there were acute confusion states which is the previous settings of coma or unconsciousness it's called it's another term is delirium delirium describes the clouding of consciousness with reduced ability to sustain attention to the environmental stimuli and major defect is lack of at attention disorientation of the time space and persons patient's thinking and his thinking will be less clear and more slow and there will be memory flood especially difficult in repeating numbers and misinterpretation of the external stimuli the patient will see one thing and interpret another and drowsiness may alternate with hyper excitability and irritability and uh, the person will be irritating and will be better not stay in the bed is the it is forms of acute confusion state is the just previous condition of the coma the patient ultimately may go to coma or not and there are some other cause of delirium but our uh, discussion is on unconsciousness how to approach for coma or unconsciousness if you have to think that Uh, diagnosis and management should run simultaneously if you want to diagnose it okay diagnosing but immediate management should have to be start whenever the patient comes to emergency or anything. rapid initial examination and emergency therapy means intermediate immediate assessments and management should be started immediately management assessment and management should have to be started immediately on arrival to emergency or anywhere else in, in in some countries the patients uh, doctors or nurses are going to the uh, in the site of unconsciousness in the home in the road in the roads either on arrival in emergency or whenever the patients uh, when you are in front of patients you have to check for the airways please a b c d you will have to look for the airways you have to look for breathing you have to clear the airway you have to look for breathing it's in stop breathing or some you have to look for circulation establishing the iv axis is important number one circulation is important because the patient may go ultimately maybe there is another cause of excessive blood loss in doctor with this or in the dam about myocardial infarction the patient will loss shall go to shock if the patient will go shock you will not get any veins for iv axis so circulation is important another thing is that you have to draw blood for stimulation of glucose and other biochemical parameters like ammonia or uh, uh, other things uh, or drug screening actually if there is acidity problem and there is a, you have to remember that the coma cocktail means dextrose oxygen naloxone and thiamine don't we have to then you have to give if you see thing that there is a, 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 a hypoglycemia you have to, you can give dextrose oxygen you have to give naloxone there is irritability and thiamine and don't you have to you can remember the mnemonic don't and ultimately the management of the offending cause in the meantime we have to assess what are the important cause will i will come to later management of the offending cause keeping in mind that we have to manage the case simultaneously with assessment and keeping in mind the circulation breathing and airway and 
blood sample should have to be drawn for proper assessment. Now history. Yeah, history is just sort of detective work. Virtually business cannot give any uh, history. Who will give the history? Commodities patients are by definition unable to supply history. Or the history is no less important just to come to other sources. Friends, bystanders, and other medical personnel who have observed the patients before and during the decrease of consciousness will tell you some history. Telephone calls to the family members so they have been suffering from diabetes or Addison's disease. And patients while at and far should examine should be examined for the list of medications and physicians' card or other information. Addison's disease, whether he's taking any drug, whether he's, he's getting a steroids, we have to think for it. Attempts should be made to ascertain a patient complaining symptoms before coma, okay. And observers may be noted, uh, observers may have to note it, may have noted head trauma, drug abuse, seizures, and hemiparesis. And those are uh, doctors or assessment or nurses should see about any other head trauma is present or not. The evidence of head, uh, drug abuse in the IV vein, seizures or hemiparesis are not. Good. And in examination, there will be general examination and then systematic examination. In general examination, we have to see the torn or disabled clothing may indicate prior assault, maybe a traffic accident or any other assaults may be unconsciousness. Vomitus may be the signs of increased intracranial pressure or drug overdose, metabolic or other toxic causes. And urinary and fecal incontinence indicates eclipse seizures. These are the observations in general examination. One is torn or disabled clothing, vomitus, and urinary or fecal incontinence. And the patient may be have pushing guard phase, steroid therapy, cachexia, suggest cancer, chronic inflammatory disorder, Addison's disease, or hypothyroidism, or hypothyroid crisis, chronic encephalopathy like this. Gynecomation, spider nevi, if present, there is, there, it will go the flu of chronic liver disease, leading to hepatitis and hepatitis, and, it, and many other things. Oral examination, poor oral hygiene, a source of sepsis, maybe a source of sepsis, and due to pulmonary infections lead to hypoxemia, and that hypoxemia and hypercapnia may lead to failure. And the pustules, the nose and upper lips may cover the sinus thrombosis, like this. And let's also the tongue lead to seizure disorder. These are the common observations we have to sort for. And order of the breath. If we uh, stand beside the uh, pressures, we can see the order of the breath, like acetone, if it is acetone breath, sickly sweet breath, the acetone breath, we can think of the, the diabetic ketosis disease. If there is fetal hepaticus or fishy smell, hepatic trauma, ammoniacal order, or like the order of the urine, we can think of uh, urine trauma, alcoholic order, in the alcohol intoxication. By this time, uh, by the grace of corona, all of, all of you, know the what is the smells of alcohol so these are the common things actually with observations order of breath may help you to diagnose something and in decade you know the sickly sweet very much sweet. not not but it's very much sweet <coughs> smell and if you have the mini screen is in the skin the injuries and bruise leading to traumatic causes dry skin in diabetic ketosis and atrophy Moist skin in case of hypoglycemia, there will be sweating and needle marks in drug addiction, needle marks in the veins, drug addiction, rashes if any presence in meningitis or endocarditis. These are the observations we can take, we can see in uh, general of the skin. And head and neck examination, evidence of injury again, and sometimes a raccoon's eye, better sign, ear, nose, and fund eye, you can see the bleeding or not. And we can see positive carnage sign. Whether there is positive, if there is positive chronic sign, it is a of meningitis and subarachnoid hemorrhage. And scars in the in front of the neck in the thyroidectomy, hypothyroidism or parathyroidectomy, like this, we can that can give many clues. Now, if I put my hands on the pulse of the patients, the pulse also gives some clue for unconsciousness. You see, if there is bradycardia, you can think of raised ICP intervening pressure. You can think of hard blow. You can think of some drugs with the blockers, opiates, etc. If the patient has bradycardia, very important sign. And if there is tachycardia, you can think of hypovolemia, hyperthyroidism, fever, septicemia, sepsis, 
and certain toxins like cocaine, yava, now we are taking yava or African poison. These are the clues that we found by, taking, by examining the pulse of the patients. And if you, if you measure the blood pressure, it, it will also give some clue. What is the clue? If there is hypertension, you can think of hypertension metabolically. Or cerebral hemorrhage is the most common. In uh, hypertension patients, cerebral hemorrhage is the most common. Or raised intracranial pressure. If, rest, if hypertension is associated with uh, bradycardia, it will go in intervals of raised intracranial pressure. Or if there is hypo, hi, hypotension, pressure is low, systolic blood pressure less than 90, less than 80, or miniatural pressure less than 60, 50, then you have to think of hypovolemia or hemorrhage, myocardial infarctions, if there is a sweatings also, intoxication, alcohol intoxication, sepsis, and profound hypothalamism or additional crisis. This will also give you clue, some clue by examining the blood pressure of the patients. Now come temperature. Actually, you, you can keep it in mind. In the, in the generalization, we have to think about four things. Actually, six things, but four things are important. Pulse, blood pressure, temperature, respiratory rate. These four things will give you the much clue, not only for the type unconscious patient, in every patient. Other than four, I will tell. I can tell another two things. It is GCS, the unconsciousness. Another is the urinary. These six things will give you the clue of many diagnoses, or the severity or present on many diagnoses, or many clue to the many diagnoses will be opened by examining these six things. I am repeating: pulse, temperature, blood pressure, respiratory rate, GCS, and urinary. Okay, now come out now, please. I uh, am coming to my uh, discussion. If there is hyperthermia, you can think about encephalitis, infections, meningitis, sepsis, or vascular, especially fontan hemorrhage, or subarachnoid hemorrhage may cause hyperthermia. Metabolic hypertoxicosis. And melatonin is not commonly available, salicylate poisoning, or heat stroke in the heat prone area like uh, Middle East countries. If the temperature is decreased less than uh, 96, 97, you can think of hypoglycemia, hypothermia uh, in, in the cold countries, mixed edema, hypo, hypopetidism, hypothyroidism, alcohol, or barbiturate poisoning, like that, anything else. You have to think about. Uh, you have to think, if this also gives clues whether this is hypothermic fever or if, uh, fever is low or depressed, less than 97. Now again comes to the respiration. I have told it earlier, respiratory rate will give also another clue for diagnosis of unconsciousness. If, there is, if the respiratory rate is high, high means more than 20. If it is more than 25 or 30, it's, 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 the, the condition will be more severe. And if the respiratory is low, means less than 8, less than 12, it's a low. But if it's the 8, it will, it will, it will, it will be more serious condition. So if there is tachypnea, respiratory high, then we can think of hypoxia, hypercapnia, acidosis, inflammatory metabolic acidosis, and toxins or drugs and sepsis. And if there is bradypnea, means respiratory is low, you can think of carbon dioxide narcosis and uh, drug overdose, especially is, uh, opioid drugs. I mean, opioid drugs, we can think of opioid drugs, which can cause uh, respiratory arrest or bradypnea. By examining the respiratory rate, or we can come to the conclusion of the cause of unconsciousness in a patient. And another thing is the respiratory pattern. Actually, uh, tough things you cannot. I can. If you can understand these two things, one is uh, cosmos respiration and chin stroke breathing. And this uh, patterns of breathing cannot be understood by the medical students. It, it, it will be reserved for the postgraduate students. Now come to the systemic examination, especially neurologic and other examination. Yeah. For neurological examination, we have to we have to see one uh, uh, three things. We have to see one is depth of coma, means the Glasgow coma scale. Every medical student, every fifth year student, or any students or intern doctor should know about Glasgow coma scales. Should know, should know. From the first day of their internship, they should learn about the GCS. Another is the brain stem function. Another lateralization of pathology. One is GCS, is a cerebral cortex, mainly depends on the cerebral cortex, and brain stem function can be divided, can be seen, we'll discuss it later on. 
and on this letter is not patho 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 pathology. Okay, now start for GCS. I am not going details about the GCS. In GCS, you all know eye opening, best verbal response and best motor response constitutes 15. And the lowest is three. And if GCS is less than eight, it is called severe and for more severe unconsciousness. If moderate, nine to 12, minor GCS more than 30. More or less 30 is a minor, I have to confess it. But if GCS is less than eight, this will deeply unconsciousness. Deeply, depression is deeply unconscious. A patient of GCS eight or less than eight should not get any oral feeding. The patient or either either feeding will be stopped, or you can, you, are, you can give naturalistic to you or to you. you. Please keep in mind. In, in GCS 13 or 12, like this, the patient can take in the supervised feeding. It can be it. And GCS should be written. Score should be written by E, B, M, like this. At 10 a.m. and date. Time and date should be present here. Time and date should be present here. These are the details score of uh, GCS. You all know this. I am not going up details about it, but keeping in mind that GCS is important things to uh, assess the patient of unconsciousness in the form of eye opening, verbal response, and motor response. This is the motor response. The, it is another chapter you can also learn from this by, by uh, how we assess the motor response, how is the verbal response, how. Are, in the discourse in, in another chapter. I'm not going into details about this. But you have to think about GCS. But if the patient is in ICU on mechanical ventilation, then GCS uh, is not uh, what over there. Then you have to think about this ABPU, it is called ABPU, alert, patient alert, response to vocal stimulus and not P, response to pain, P, or unresponse to this. Uh, this alternate of GCS should be applied in the ICU or in other ICU when there is, there is a mechanical ventilation, patient is an intrathoracic, uh, inter, sorry, uh, inter, uh, I, uh, on uh, ventilation, on ventilation, on tube. Another thing is the brain stem function. We have to assess the brain stem function. How we can assess brain stem function? Brain stem function can be assessed by peep, seeing the pupils, by seeing the eye movements and position. By seeing the corneal reflex, endotracheal by the endotracheal tube, by endotracheal tube, you can it. Corneal reflex can be seen by two ways: by outside, by stimulating the endotracheal tube, and respiratory drive. These four findings can be assessed to assess the function of the brain stem. One is pupil, eye movements and position, corneal reflex, and respiratory drive. Pupil means area size and direction of the pupil. Structural lesions are more commonly associated with the uh, pupillary asymmetry with or without loss of uh, light temperatures. You should have to keep in mind. Uh, these are the uh, common pupillary changes. Actually, bilateral pinpoint pupils, if there is there, if there is bilateral pinpoint pupils, we can think of opiate poisoning or pontine hemorrhage. Opiate poisoning or pontine hemorrhage will give the bilateral pinpoint pupil. Bilateral small slightly uh, small uh, slightly small pupils we have to think of metabolic encephalopathy as or any other things bilateral dilated and fixed is mid brain remains or brain breath we can think about it unilateral small people corner syndrome unilateral small people corner syndrome and ipsilateral dilated people with no or direct concentrated light reflex is the compression of the heart failure nerves we can think about it and we can see here, this is the asymmetric third nerve posse, is unilateral uh, dilatation. Small and reactive metabolic and copulopathy, small and reactive, and this is called pinpoint people in, uh, in case of opiates poisoning or content hemorrhage. This is the third nerve posse. This is the uh, metabolic or small and reactive. If we see, uh, uh, here is normal, if you see here is pinpoint people, we can think of Horner syndrome, unilateral Horner syndrome. And in Horner syndrome, there will be ptosis also. There will be ptosis. And now this eye movements. 
eye movements are of two types spontaneous eye movement and elicited eye movements. We have to provoke for eye movements. This spontaneous ocular movements by, by seeing these movements, deviation of the eyes towards the lesion in frontal location. It is spontaneously. The patient would look towards the frontal lobe lesion in, in case of frontal lobe lesion. The patient would look towards the lesion. Deviation of the eye towards the lesion. And in the frontal lesion, the deviation of in the opposite side. Deviation of the eye will be opposite side in the frontal lesion. We have to keep it in our mind. Number one. Another this elicited eye ocular movement means oculocephalic or dull set movement and caloric oculovestibular response. These are the uh, actually postgraduate level uh, discussion. And we can think of uh, dull oculocephalic or dull set movement. You can think. Very simple. Uh, rotating the head from the side to side and observe the position of the eyes. If the eyes move conjugately in the opposite direction to that of head movement, the response is positive and indicates the intact pons, mediating a normal or vestibular flow in, 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 in the like dolls number and uh, dolls head movement, you know. And another thing is oculocephalic or uh, oculovestibular uh, or caloric oculovestibular. You have to pour some cold water or hot water, especially cold water in the ear, and you see the corneal reflex from eye uh, corneal reflex and eye movement. As a postgraduate level, I am not discussing it again. Another thing is that lateralization of pathophysiology. Lateralization of pathology means we have to see for asymmetry of the face. We have to come to the conclusion. Asymmetry of the tone, in lateral facility or as plasticity. This is stroke, this is sense of stroke. Asymmetry of disadibrate or decorticate posturing. Asymmetrical response to the pain if you stimuli and asymmetrical uh, asymmetry of tendon reflex and plantar response. Here I can tell if plantar reflex response is bilaterally extensor, plantar response bilateral extensor, we can think of metabolic control. Unconscious patient, but plantar extensor, one, one side extensor, another see equivocal unknown. We have to think of lateralizing sense means stroke. And another thing is that other than metabolic encephalopathy, if there is plantar extensor on both sides, at contractions of both sides, you can think of metabolic encolopathy. But other than encolopathy, you can think of this, uh, parasitical and meningioma, which also, uh, in which case, the person also get unconsciousness. So, uh, the thing is that by lateralizing a pathology, you can assess or you can get some clues for the diagnosis. Where you have to, so we have to look for face, we have to look for tone, we have to posturing, we have to look for posturing, we have to look for tendon reflex or contractions. By, as, by assessing these things, we can get some use for the diagnosis. Another thing is the motor function. Particular attention should be directed towards the asymmetry of the tone and monosphere. I have told you earlier, plantar response, tendon reflex also, uh, all, it's a less reflex actually, less useful. And <coughs> motor response of the pain process should be assessed carefully. Why? Because uh, depression may be in the vegetative or may be in locked in syndrome, the patient that pain or by, by doing it can give irritation to the patients. You have to think it carefully. Another is cardiac examination by seeing the murmurs of the heart, especially in the murmurs of metal stenosis, you can get the some clues. If there is metal stenosis, there is a chance of embolization. You can go some more. Uh, infective endocarditis or infective endocarditis or, uh, or, or metal stenosis or, or any vegetations from the left atrium will go to the emboli from the uh, left atrium will go to the brain for the for the cause of unconscious stroke. Arrhythmia, you, you can think of arrhythmia or you can look for arrhythmia or degradation. Another is auscultation of the respiratory system to see the crabs around. Actually the for crabs. Why? There is a chance of aspiration pneumonia. So, in a, for the management of unconscious patients, we have to think for whether the patient has got uh, aspiration pneumonia or not. If there is aspiration pneumonia, we have to treat this case with uh, with, with, with metronidazole or products like antibiotic. If there is, if we not, if you will not give any antibiotic, the patient may later may develop uh, aspiration pneumonia with lung abscess, etc., etc., etc. And abdominal examination is another sign, another clue, the signs of trauma. Any blunt injury or signs of CLD. 
abdominal distance and, and anything anything on and many other things which is the glue of CLD we can think of, we can think of uh, umbilicus and 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 any and, and ghost vein testicular trophy suffering like this now come to the investigations actually uh, before starting investigation i am i am not uh, going uh, very much details about in this my my uh, my uh, topics was what next to think actually thinking my thinking and i am telling the all uh, uh, all all of my uh, listener that we have to think wisely on the bad side we have to think we have to assess the patients we have to manage simultaneously and many clues will be present on the patient's body other than history we have to think about this we have to think about in the form of generalization we have to think about in the form of system origination in the generalization i have given uh, four things as a clue pulse temperature respiration and blood pressure and and a system origination every mainly neurological examination but also uh, cardiovascular, respiratory, and GIT examination should have to be done cautious. And we can, we can give proof to the diagnosis of unconscious patients. Now, if you have the, uh, sufficient time or you know, afterwards, after one or two hours, initial, after initial resuscitation of the patient, air or breathing circulation like this, initial resuscitation has been done. Now you can go for investigation. What is the investigation? Biochemistry, electrolytes, hyponatremia, macros, glucose, hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, liver biochemistry, means hepatic and prolific, serum albumin, FGPT, protomine time like this, metabolic and endocrine state, TSAs, hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism, addition and crisis, drug resistance, blood alcohol, toxicology means any benzodiazepines or narcotics, yeah, like this. And arterial blood gas, like uh, blood glasses and lasses, there's a chance of metabolic acid is will lead to one process. And brain imaging, either CT or MRI, EEG, and CSR examination in case of meningitis and subarachnoidosis. I can tell it here the CT is the for anatomical diagnosis, and CT can be done urgently to exclude whether there is intestinal hemorrhage or not. What is intestinal subarachnoid hemorrhage or? Sub, uh, subdural hematoma like this, CT will be done immediately. But for uh, pathological diagnosis and the, for the diagnosis of infertile region, we can have to do the MRI. Now come to the management of the unconscious patients. I have told it earlier, management should be, should be uh, done on the immediately uh, whenever you are in front of the patients. What is the management? Immediate goal of the comatose patient to prevent the further nervous system trauma. Or for the nervous damage and treatment of the underlying cause. What is the common cause? You have to identify and treatment of the underlying cause. Especially hypotension should have been treated, hypoglycemia, hypercalcemia, hypoxia, oxygen, hypercapnia, hyperthermia should be corrected rapidly. I am repeating it. Hypotension, hypoglycemia, hypercalcemia, Hypoxia, hypercapnia, hyperthermia should be corrected rapidly. Otherwise, it will cause the permanent brain damage. Maintenance of normal physiology, respiration, circulation, and nutrition. Very important things. Especially in respiration, you have to maintain, you have to maintain the air, or clear the air, circulation, IV access, and IV nutrition. Patients should be nursed on his or her side without a pillow, like this uh, like this picture on his or side and 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 the, and the cervical region should be extended the hands should be like this the foot should be like this attention will be clearly need to pay to the airway requiring the oral, oral airway as in requiring an oral airway means you have to you have to think about the whether there is airway is clear or not the cervical region should be extended like this and hands should be like this Food should be like this. You can, um, um, this is the position of the unconscious patients. You should have to keep in mind in every unconscious person, either in the ward or any other. Any other. I should, person should not be in the supine position. If at all supine position, the head end should be raised at least 30 to 40 degrees so that there will be no aspiration pneumonia. 
intubation and trache intubation even tracheostomy may be needed if trauma is followed detention and unconscious urine will be will require catheterization if there is detention in the uh, uh, male or in continuous in the female requires catheterization but uh, if we have uh, there is in continuous of the urine no retention you can uh, give a, you can use diaper because if there is catheterization there is chance of infection but if the unconscious patient needs intake output maintenance of intake output chart you can give uh, you can you can give catheter intravenous fluid is necessary adequate nutrition is required care of the skin frequent change of position special mattress is called air mattress and avoid urine and stool soiling good care of the blood source is needed i am repeating it again these are important things in the, uh, in the management of unconscious patient care of the skin care of the mouth care of the oral cavity care of the eye care of the genitalia care of the uh, lower limb for uh, uh, not developing deep vein thrombosis and urine stool soiling bed sore daily you have to uh, clean the patient daily to prevent bed sore and this and this you have to uh, you to you to arrange a special mattress called air mattress you have to you have to use it to prevent bed sore okay i am more or less uh, uh, close to my ending of the lecture now the prognosis prognosis is dependent depend on the large extent the underlying cause if the hypoglycemia probably is good if you give the, uh, the glucose depression is all right length of coma and intrinsic age are prognostic significant length of coma and intrinsic age is more than 70 80 poor prognosis brain stem reflex important predictor about if brain stem is to be dilated dilated and fixed means depression is now going for the brain stem death and pupillary reflex corneal reflex also gives you clue for prognosis common due to the depression drugs there is a good prognosis depression drugs opioid pinpoint people no clue other than this is a good thing. metabolic cause apart from anoxia I mean the hypoxia actually is a better prognosis than structural lesions are hidden these are the prognostic factors for uh, patient of unconsciousness so my listener my respected listener all the medical students all over the world especially especially uh, organizer many thanks to give me the chance to say something in front of the august gatherings of lord listener i am very much privileged to have a nice time with all of you in managing the unconscious patients there are two or three four points i can tell you is that unconsciousness is a, a, a state of unresolved unresponsiveness where the in whose the patient lies in the ice box number two the cause is mainly metabolic mainly metabolic 60 to 70 percent 20 to 30 percent in neurology but whether it is it is metabolic or neurological we have to determine it very soon we have to determine immediately otherwise you will lose the patient if there is a neurological development you have to refer the neurology one if there is metabolic cause hypoglycemia respiratory failure hepatic failure uh, and, and renal failure you have to do refer this person or you have to give sick uh, consultancy from the respiratory side diagnosis and treatment management should have to be addressed simultaneously and there's no uh, you can do there's um, no time consumption time is the time is time is means tissue okay. time means in case of in case of uh, stroke this is called time means tissue so whether the time elapses tissue will be damaged and brain stem reflex early in the coma are important predictor of we have to see for pupil or corneal reflex pupillary reflex pupillary size for the to see the predictor of coma so thank you very much for patient sharing thank you thank you very much over i am